Good morning, church. At least it's morning while we're doing this. I'm not sure when you get this, whether it'll be morning or not, but we'll just go with with that. I'm not sure what seems more weird to me, you watching me on video or me speaking to you via video. It's interesting. I don't mind talking to 100, 200, 300 people and standing in front of them, but I get actually freaked out when I'm doing this in front of a, a camera. So here we go, because this is going to kind of be our new normal. It's going to be why we do, um, what we're doing over these next three weeks as we kind of adjust our lives and adjust um, who we are as a church. Um, to deal with the, the COVID-19 virus that's out in front of us. As many of you know, the COVID-19 virus has caused a lot of disruption in our, in our lives, in our social lives, in our entertainment lives, in our, in our work life. It's caused or disruption in our, in our economy, in our travel, and, and in our educational systems, and and in many other ways um, that we haven't even mentioned. But as you all know, it's also um, for us has, has disrupted the ability for us as the people of God to gather together and, and, and worship together in, in the normal way that we would normally worship. And that disruption is the very reason that um, we're beginning to put these videos together um, today. As many of you know, the, the governor of the state a few weeks ago or a few days ago asked us not to gather in, in groups of more than 50. And as, as recently as yesterday, the president and his task team came out and ask us also not to have reduced that number to asking us not to even gather in numbers greater than 10. And so in compliance with these requests, the, the leadership here at Sunfield has decided to suspend our Sunday services, uh, our gatherings um, for the next three Sundays with the hope that we'd be able to reconvene sometime um, the week of Holy Week, and possibly um, our first gathering would be at Good Friday with the Kilpatrick Church, and then our second gathering would be together here on Easter Sunday. So these video chats that we're having right now will be what we're going to do each week during our, our time away from each other. Each Thursday, or sometime around Thursday, you should be receiving these videos either through a, our Facebook page or via email or through text messaging. And but if you don't have some of those those access, if you don't have an access to to computer to a computer or or a smartphone or or maybe you are technically challenged in some of these areas. Then what we want you to do is 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 please call the office. Let us know because we want to be able to to get this information that we're talking about today out to you. And so we'll send you a letter with the script kind of that I'm following and the information that I'm giving in the in the little message app that I'm going to share with you, and we'll put that out to you via regular postage. Now, each week, the video that um, we send out to you is going to have three components to it. The first component is, is they won't necessarily be in this order, but, but the, one of the components will include just information. Each week, we're going to be giving you updates on, on what's happening, what is, what's been canceled, what is, is still scheduled, what is, is being rescheduled for another time. So we'll also be just giving you information on what are some of the opportunities that that are available for us as the church individually and collectively in order to serve one another and what are some of the opportunity or what are some of the opportunities that 
that we have to serve the community as those things come in? And also, what are some of the ongoing needs of, of individuals, either in our community or, or, or in the church as well? And then also just some information on what are some of the ongoing needs of, of those who are trying to serve other individuals. Otherwise, if you're, if you're willing to serve someone, what are some of the things that you might need in order to serve other people during these times? So it'll be a time of, of information, um, as I've just described, and, and also any other pertinent information that, that kind of comes up through the week. Now, the second component that, that will be part of the video will be what we're just saying is inspiration. And during each week, um, as we'll do today, during each week, we'll, we may, um, we'll have just a time of inspiration. We may just take a passage of, of Scripture um, with a few thoughts that surround that passage. Or we may take a number of Scriptures that address just some of the thoughts and emotions that, that kind of come as a result of these abnormal circumstances that have kind of entered into our lives that that cause us some angst, that cause us some anxiety, that that maybe bring some fears and some some other emotions into our lives because uncertainty can do that. Then the last component of of the video will will be about application, where we'll talk about ways to be the church during these kind of confusing times. We'll We'll suggest to you ways and opportunities to serve those inside and, and outside of the church. And we'll give you just some specific items to, to be praying for so that we're praying together as, as the church and, and in unity and, and for our nation. And some of those prayers have already been set out um, this week via um, Facebook. Um, so if you are not on our Facebook page, um, please go just in and, and like our Facebook page. That way you can, you, the prayers will be there for us to pray through each week and um, we can do that together. So today let's kind of begin just talking about and giving you some information about what's been happening. As, as I've already said, we're, we're um, planning on resuming our normal activities um, beginning Monday, April 6th, and kind of moving through Holy Week into, into Good Friday and, and, and then into Easter Sunday. And um, also our office hours will, re -conti will continue here. The office will begin to be opened on, um, on April 6th as well. Right now, beginning next week, we're going to allow Heather to work from home, and a number of us will be working from home, but Heather will also be connected to the church, so if you need to get a hold of her for any church business, you can just call the church's number, and the church will automatically connect with, with her home phone. So those are just some things that that will be a little out of the norm, but you can still call the church and, and reach her during normal church hours. In the meantime, we're kind of looking at a number of ways that we can be helpful to the people of the church and to the issues of our community as, as a result of this pandemic that we, we found ourselves in and are trying to work ourselves out of. And here's some of the things that that we've done so far. We've called everyone who's been connected with our church directory and, and we've gone over a needs assessment with, with each person that we've contacted. Now in this assessment, we've asked each person if there are any needs that, that they have and then taking an inventory of those needs. But also during this assessment, we're, we're asking if there are any needs that they might be able to assist with and also developing an inventory for, for those needs as, as well. 
And in doing this, asking, are there needs? And then also asking, can you assist in needs? We're looking to connect those who can assist in a need with those who have a need in our church body. And then this inventory, we want to also begin to use out in our, out in our community to help with, with community needs as they become apparent to us. And so one of the ways that we'll be assessing community needs is, is, through, is through a needs assessment for them that we are preparing today, and then we're going to put that out next week and move that out into the community as well. And we've talked about and some other things that we're doing is, is many of you know that the school system is providing lunches for for the the students who are out of school right now, but also just connected with the the um, the food program for certain individuals in the school. So the school is still going to provide those meals, and here in Sunfield, they're going to drop off those meals at a specific location. So we are contacting the school to see if there is anything that we can do to help disperse those meals to the people who need it. So that's one of the things that that we're doing there. We've also asked or also talked with one of the local food banks to find out how we can join them to deliver food to those who don't have transportation or or don't feel comfortable with with getting out into the public right now, but they still have the need for for food. And and so we're working with them to 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 get the name of the person or the person can call over to the food bank and then we will go over and get it and and we will have some people deliver it to those um, who have that need. And we've also talked uh, a little bit with the Eaton County Commissioner, one of the Eaton County Commissioners, and, and just letting them know that we're beginning to put together this this assessment um, of people who are willing to assist in in meeting needs and and just letting them know that we're available for some of those as well. You see, there to me, there's there's already a, a many infrastructures that are already in place for for meeting the needs. So, but there may be a few areas where some gaps need to be filled in that we actually can can step in and, and fill in those gaps as well. So I just want to say this, if if we've missed any of you with our needs assessment, um, we apologize. Um, we may not have your information, um, but if if we have, but if you do want to be a part of that or you do have needs um, then then please call the church office and and also if if there's somebody that you know that has a need that that possibly we can come in and help support them during this time then then um, also call the church office and just one other way um, before we kind of get through this information component here, another way that you can help us is, is to reach out to those around you. This is something that you can do individually. This is something we've been talking about that the church is, is people and it's people individually and it's people co collectively. So this is a way that you can begin to be the church just individually. So if there's per people around you that that you that you know need some assistance, especially those who are who are most vulnerable, so to speak, to the to the virus, then then we've been talking a lot about being the church. So please help if if it's something that you can't help with, then please let us know so that we can help with it or we can help others to help with it as well. Now, as many of you know, there's a lot of uncertainty that comes with this virus and 
the circum and the circumstances that surround it. These uncertainties have created for us just a lot of questions about what happens next. And, and also these uncertainties have just created a, a, a measure of fear and anxiety in, in the lives of some people, and sometimes even, even the people of, of God. That's why I think it's important for us in these videos to just speak into some of these things, to kind of focus in on, on God, and to focus in on, on his word, to focus in on what his scriptures say and teach and speak to you and, and to me. So today I just want to talk about a passage that's, that's pretty familiar to all of you. It's in Proverbs 3 and it's verse 5 and 6. It's a really short passage. It's a passage that, that I learned when I was um, first started to walk with the Lord because I needed this passage in my life. I needed to kind of grab hold of it and hang on to it and, and find my security in what this passage says. But let me just share it with you. It's, it's many, like I said, many of you know it. But it goes like this. Solomon in Proverbs um, makes this statement. And he just says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And don't lean on your own understanding. But in all of your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your paths. You see... In this passage, there's three things that are kind of prescribed for us to do as we run up against difficult circumstances in our lives. It doesn't matter whether they're good circumstances. Um, it doesn't actually matter if they're normal circumstances, or it doesn't even matter if it's when we're going through confusing or unpredictable or even scary circumstances of life, this passage of scripture fits every circumstances stance that we're that we're in. That's why it says, "In all your ways," that when we go through all of our ways. So the first thing that that Solomon prescribes is that we trust in the Lord with all of our heart, with our whole being. We don't just trust in him with our eyes and, and what we see and, and, and question what we see or and question him based on what we see. We don't just question him just with our emotions and, and what we feel and, and, and what the feelings that we have about the situation or the circumstances that are around us. We don't just trust him in, in, in different areas of our, of our being. The word in scripture, whole heart, trusting with our heart means our, our whole being. We're to trust him with our whole self in every circumstance. And then the second thing that he prescribes is, is this. First, we're to trust him with our we're to trust the Lord with all of our heart. But then second thing is he kind of tells us what not to do. Don't lean on your own understanding. You see, sometimes we try to figure out what's going on. We get caught up in what, what's God doing? What's, what's happening to us in, in this? How does God fit this? How do we fit into this? And we try to lean in on our own understanding. And I don't know how shaky your understanding of situations is at times, but sometimes my understanding is a little bit wobbly. And what it's saying is you don't put all your weight on your own understanding. We don't lean in on our own understanding. Solomon's encouraging us to lean in on God. Not to lean on our own understanding, but to lean on in on him. And then he kind of prescribes the way to do that here in the third prescription. And, and that's this. In all of your ways, in every part of your life, good, 
bad, scary, weird, just like I'm doing right now in front of this camera. In all of your ways, <laughs> in all of your circumstances, acknowledge him. Acknowledge his attributes. Acknowledge his sovereignty. And now acknowledge that it's him who is faithful in all things. That, it, that he is good and that he is able to take all things and work them together for good. That he is able to do more than we can even ask or think about. That he is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. That he is Jehovah Shalom, our peace. That he is omniscient. That he's all-knowing. None of this has taken him by surprise that we're in today. He's not surprised. Oh my gosh, they're not having church for three Sundays. He's not surprised by that. We are, but he's not. And that he's omnis omnipresent, that he's always present in every situation. And although he's present in our in our Sunday gatherings, because we ask for him to be present through the power and anointing of his Holy Spirit, he is still always present in every situation of our lives. You see, many times it's, it's easy for us to focus in on the negative circumstances and then kind of give a quick little glance over here to God and then focus back in on our negative circumstances. And then we give a quick little glance over here to God and then we focus back on our negative circumstances. But to acknowledge him means to, to put our main focus on God and then give a quick glance to our circumstances and then focus back in on God and then give a quick glance to our circumstances. Because our circumstances are real. The circumstances of of, of this virus are, are out in front of us. But if our only focus is on that, and we put so much focus on that, and we give it just a little glance to God, we're missing our peace. Because if we focus with our eyes, rather than trust in him with our whole heart, then we begin to drift away and begin to get scared. And we begin to then lean in on our own understanding. And so in all ways, we're to acknowledge him. And then when we do these three things, when, when we trust in him with all our heart, when, when, we just, we, when we don't just lean on our own understanding, and when in all our ways we acknowledge him, we focus in on him, then it says that then he begins to direct your path, my path. Now, that doesn't mean that he changes the circumstances, but in the midst of the circumstances, he begins to direct our focus on where our focus needs to be directed. And he begins to direct us in ways to, to begin to grow in him and begin to glorify him with our lives. If we get caught up in the angst, then we miss the opportunity that God has put out here in front of us to be the church that he's called us to be. You see, God wants us to focus in on him. He wants us to focus in on his personhood. He wants us to focus in on his promises. He wants us to focus in on his purposes. So in doing that, we end up getting his peace in our lives, regardless of what the circumstances are around us. In Paul's letter to the Philippians, we read that, we read this. He says, 
he says, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, which is God himself, then think on such things. And as you do, Paul says, the peace of God will be with you. Earlier in Philippians, the Apostle Paul also encouraged his, his readers with, with this. He says, don't be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and by petition and with thanksgiving to present your requests to God. And the peace then of God that transcends all of our understanding. Did you hear that? The peace of God that transcends is bigger than, that, that, that's more than our understanding, that transcends all understanding, will begin to guide our hearts and our minds in Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus said to, to his disciples in, in John 16, 33, he said, I told you these things, talking to his disciples, of which we are now. I've told you these things so that you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But then he goes on and says, but be of good cheer, be of good heart, because I have overcome the world. I like what David says in, in Psalm 91. So, so I'm going to, I just want to, read it to you. It came to me as I was kind of putting this together and smaller print, so I'm going to have to put on the glasses here. But this is what he says in Psalm 91. He says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will end up resting in the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, he says, when we allow our thoughts to dwell on God, when we allow our thoughts to dwell, it's like the shelter of the Most High. And, and we, as we do that, we will find rest. We will find peace. We will find hope. We will find, we will find security in the shadow of the Almighty. Then David goes on and says, it says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Otherwise, he begins to speak out what he sees. Surely he will save me from the fowler's stare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. And his faithfulness in all things will be your shield and your rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrows that fly by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. Pretty apropos to where we are. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes, and you will only observe it with your eyes. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord, who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he, listen to this, acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. So here's the application for all of this for us today. Is this week I'd like you just to begin to look up the scriptures in your Bible that speak about the attributes of God. 
You can do that through your concordance this week, or you can just <laughs> use Google and Google the attributes of God. And in many ways, it will begin to just give you all of the a number of the scriptures that speak about the very attributes, the very names of God. And then I'm just going to encourage you to, to gather them up and begin to just meditate on them and begin to think about them and, and how, how they can impact your life as, as you kind of embrace them as for yourself. And I'm just going to ask you to do that because when we do, the circumstances that surround us seem to kind of move in the peripheral while the very presence of God begins to move into our life. And so that's the application for this week for us. So you have information. Hopefully you've had some inspiration and, and now it's time for you to begin to apply some things to your life. And that's what it means to be the church. Talk to you next week.